we already have people. Well, hello. All right. Hey, everyone. All right, y'all early, y'all. We won't wait till seven o'clock, all right? Oh, let me send, um, I'm gonna make, is my sister on? Let me see if my sister's on, yes. Then also, I'm gonna make you the host right now, okay? Can you open it? I think that might be an answer. Yeah, we both can be in here in an It's going to echo. So you're going to have to go ahead and add it to it. I'm about to send you an email too. Tamika, hey Tamika, hey, let me see, let me see. I'm um sending my sister the document right now. All Hey, Yami, let me, um, let me just chat. Three minutes. Um, I don't see it. Let me refresh my email. Let's go to counselor.com, yeah. This is so strange. <laughs> Hi, Pizza. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Yemi. Yeah, Yemi, I don't I don't see an email. I don't know what's going on. 
Hey, Emmy. Hi. You look great. Yes. Yeah, I, I don't see an email, Yemi. I don't know what's going on. Uh, I'm going to send it again. Like, okay. Right now. All right. Where's the birthday girl background? <laughs> yeah. Background. With a, with a crown. I don't, I don't, actually, I do have my Zoom. Listen, let me, let me well, show y'all my background. How do you do that? You just got to get a picture from Google. Oh, hi, Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Bobby? Welcome, everybody. What's welcome, up, welcome. If it, if it, if it, what's up? I'm coming to you right now, sis. Oh, that's how they got my background looking. Oh, girl, you look ashy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Vanessa. That's because of the light. That's because of the light. All right, so we can just dub it. Yeah, just dub it. Mommy. Nope. Let's just, <laughs> just dub it. All right, no no background, and also we just going to have, it's just going to be this. It's going to be this. All right, we're going to wait for a few more people to come in. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. We're going to just wait on a few more uh, people to come in and join. Oh, y'all get comfortable. Take a little sip if you need to. A puff puff. Whatever you got to do, do that. Oh, I just realized I was on mute. Peter. Hi, Peter. Oh, Maddie's with you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She interrupting the program, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I had a feeling she might. All right, she chilling, right, Maddie? I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just make sure my face looks decent in this corner. <laughs> <laughs> you look fine. <laughs> you look Yo, fine. I put on um that lipstick you got me. Yes. Put yeah. some lip gloss on. Yes. Hello, everybody. What's up, Guy Jones? Oh, yeah, it's about to go down. Oh, man. Okay, yeah, Missy, I got your, I got your email. I'm going to forward it to my sister right now. We're going to start, you guys. Let's just let a couple more people join in. All right, let me send my sister. Oh boy, they're trying to play with me. Then okay. also, can you um send me your email address in the chat, please? He's trying to be in this video so hard. <laughs> um. Okay, perfect. Happy birthday, Miss 7-Eleven. Thank you, everybody. It's also Bobby Stone's birthday today. It's we have my the birthday, same too. Happy birthday, Bobby. Happy birthday Bobby. to you, too, Bobby. July 11th. Yes. Do you know what time you, you, thank you, God. You know what time you were born, July 11th? Um, I don't, actually. <laughs> I don't either, but I know it was like five o'clock, six in the morning. I think I was born at night, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but happy birthday, happy sis. Wish you many more. Thank you. Thank you. All right. It's almost 7.05. We're going to get started at 7.05 as people join in. Um, then also, once we start, you can mute everybody. 
um, and then I'll introduce uh, tonight. All right, we got one more minute. So let me pull up. That's your sister with the same last name and your niece over there? Y'all look yes, like yes. That's <laughs> my little sister. She's oh, hosting with me. Yeah, doing yeah. Yeah. Favor. Wow, look at that. Happy birthday, Mommy. Happy birthday, Mommy. Oh, oh thank oh. you, Maddie. Thank you, Pumpkin. All right. All right, let's get started. All right, so let me just pull up my little itinerary that I have so I stay on track for myself. All right, and now, so you can go ahead and put everybody on mute. Okay. All right, thank you, everybody. We're gonna get started. We're gonna let people come in. I hope everyone is doing great. Um, all right, so this is the first annual Amakoso Poetry Slam, and I just wanted to do something to um, bring in my 27th birthday, especially with everything that's going on. Um, it's still important for us to celebrate ourselves um, and just find joy in the midst of all of this chaos. Um, so I contacted a, a group of powerful performers who I know have a great message who are here to share with us today. Um, I have my sister co-hosting this event with me. Um, so yes, my sister, her name is Nana. Give us some love in the comment section. Um, she actually just had a birthday June 19th. Her birthday is on Juneteenth, okay? So um, yeah, my sister will be co-hosting with me. Um, I want her to introduce herself, so Nana, so please introduce yourself. Who are you? What do you do? What school did you go to? You know, just a little bit of a background. All right, hi y'all. <laughs> hi, my name is Nana. Um, I'm a recent graduate. I went to Skidmore College, graduated class of 2019. And since then I started my career at a global law firm. Um, I'm in recruiting. So it's been, you know, it's been interesting post-grad life, um, especially in this work from home environment. I think we could all relate to, you know, not really knowing what's going on, but adjusting. Yes. Um, and I'm so happy to be yes, thank this you. time with my sister. Thank you, Vanessa. I couldn't do so. Maddie had to make an appearance. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, so hopefully y'all have a good program happy today. Day, I know my sister mommy. was really excited about this. So yeah, I can't wait to hear all the performances. All right. Thank you, Nanasa. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. So. I'm going to talk about Amakosawa LLC, how that even got started. Um, Amakosawa LLC started in 2018. Yes, November 2018, um, after I got fired um, in 2017 in July. I actually had my, my anniversary of getting fired on July 3rd. Um, so I, you know, I was pregnant at the time, about five months pregnant with Maddie. And I was still, you know, going on interviews and stuff like that. But like, when it's time to be honest about your pregnancy, you, you know, can't prove discrimination if they're gonna, you know, fire you if you're pregnant or not. So me and Trevor were like, all right, what the heck am I gonna do? We had a six figure household at this time. And now we, you know, was just on him. So I was like, all right, I have a book that was, you know, my senior thesis project. I wrote my first book back to book to me. But then it was like, all right, don't be the cliche struggling writer. I have to do other stuff. So that's when I started helping other people write their own books, doing self-consultations. And that's how Amakosa LLC came about. All right. Um, and right now I'm working on uh, the I'm a Writer Super Course, which will be hopefully releasing at the end of the year, um, which will basically break down what I did step by step. Um, to be able to monetize on my writing and avoid the, you know, cliche struggling writer stereotype. All right. Um, and then I'm working on my third book. It's titled Why Every Pregnant Woman, Why Every Pregnant Woman Should Write a Book. 
and I'm just going to read the introduction for you guys. Once I'm done with the introduction, then we jump right into the open mic section of the event. All right? All right, so let me pull it up. All right. So a lot of us have heard the saying that every pregnancy is unique, and we know this to be true because of the women who have gone through successful or unsuccessful pregnancies. So why not share how or why not share why in a book? After getting fired while I was pregnant and then going um, on to write my first book, Back to Gukun to Me, I have experienced the emotional, mental, and financial benefits of writing a book. And um, it's therapeutic, it's nostalgic, and as one of my favorite authors and um, psychologist, Dr. Joy DeGore says, it puts things into its proper perspective. All right, so once I gave birth to Madison, I didn't want to lose myself, um, you know, as an individual person outside of motherhood. And so I was able to engulf myself into my writing and find my purpose again. And when I decided on the title for this book, I was often asked why I believe every pregnant woman should write a book. And my response is simple. It will give pregnant women something to do. <laughs> um, some pregnant women work until the third trimester and some are, um, some are on bed rest their entire pregnancy. Okay, so writing a book keeps you busy and it makes you feel productive. And I want to show women the value of expressing, expressing their emotions about their pregnancy and motherhood experience. And this book is here to teach you how to use your pregnancy or pregnancies to build wealth, but also share your story with your family and other people who can find value from your own personal journey. And my hope in writing this book is that I will encourage people to advocate for women before they are pregnant, while they are pregnant, and after they give birth. All right, so that's my short, small introduction. Sister, I'm, I'm so sorry. It's 7-Eleven right now. That, that was no way. Time. Right now is 7-Eleven. It is, yeah. And you, I just had to, go ahead. <laughs> thank you for pointing that out. Oh man, thank you for pointing that out. All right, so. We're a little early jumping into the open mic. I hope that's okay. I see some more people coming in. Hey, Jasmine. Hey, Tiffany. Hey, you guys. Welcome. All right. We're going to jump into the open mic section. Let's see who we have first. Let me pull out my sheet. All right. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? All right, so the first person that we have performing for us is Susan Boos. Susan, are you here? Susan Boos, are you here, girl? Okay. I'll come back to her because I don't know if she's here. All right, Susan, I'll come back to you. All right, so the next person we have is Bell's Epiphany. Bells Epiphany, are you here, girl? Oh, snap. Come on now. All right. <laughs> no Bells Epiphany. All right. Okay. Next person is LaVar Cassaberry. This is my family. LaVar, are you here? LaVar Cassaberry. All right, we got crickets on that too. All right, next we have Miss Nia Miller. Nia, are you here? I am, I didn't expect yes. to Yes, all right. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. All right, <laughs> Nia, let me give you a quick introduction, a small one, because I know you, you low key. Um, all right, so everyone, this is Nia Miller. I met Nia in college and we became absolutely great friends close friends to this day. Um, I've learned so, so, so much from Nia, and she's gracing us with a performance today. So without further ado, my dear, please go ahead. Okay. Um, so this piece is called Beach Date or Day at the Beach. I want the strong presence of the sun to pin me to the sand with his warmth. 
to nip at my neck and ears, delightfully burning my skin. I want to feel the steady rhythm of the tide beat me tender as I float into the ocean's embrace. I want the waves to pull me down, to hold me tight to the edge of suffocation, to engulf my body in its power. I want to surrender to its will, let it have its way with me until I rise exhausted, dripping and painstakingly low. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my gosh, Nia, Nia just writes, and I'm not gonna say too, too much, but like Nia like writes dark um, content so well in a way that like, I've never experienced before and she does it in such an eloquent way that you don't even realize the heaviness sometimes of the poetry. Thank you so much, Nia. All right. Oh. All right, beloved, beloved Jones, you are next. Are you here? Beloved Jones, are you here? Yes, yes, she is. Hold on. All right, let's go. <laughs> All right, so let me give you a quick introduction as, as, uh, as good as I can. I'm, I met you through IG. We, we don't actually know each other, but I came across her page because she sells vegan sweet potato pies and i cannot wait until the day that i get that sweet potato pie in my hands so that i can enjoy it but she also sings acts does poetry a whole bunch of stuff outside of just that and so thank you so much for joining me tonight without further ado beloved jones please go ahead i am black that's what the man says. My skin tan from migration, germination, and copulation. I am deep cinnamon. Spread out over a frame of bone, thick even when thin. My eyes wide, teeth whitish, lips full, ears pierced, hair fierce to perfection. Correction, I am negros and jimenez. Not by chemicals, but by essence. I am the girl from around the way, down the block, up the street, on Mount Pleasant, in Mount Vernon. I am the kiss, the whisper the shut your mouth. I am the laughter and the last voice you hear before you cross over into ecstasy or eternity. I am the answered prayer, the one that will help you complete your journey, whatever the difference, whatever the proximity. I am the kiss, the sweet succulent tasting of your top and your bottom. I am her. So stop looking and checking and searching. Rest, cause I am black, Jack. I am she. Yeah, boy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, beloved. Oh my God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that was powerful. Thank you. Yes. Whew, all right. I, I knew this was going to be good. Okay. Let's move on. All right. Oh, next, of course, we have Mr. Guy Jones. And I know you there. I heard your voice. Yes, sir. Mom, All right. That's yes, my mom. Yes, with the locks in the bun. Yes, I see you. I see you. Thank All right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> about the way. All right. So we All got right. talent in the family. So I'm ready. I'm ready. We ready. Let's go. Church. Uh, I need you to be real black for me. Like, like, just like that for me. Dope as crack, give me dap, stiff in your back, and when I spit that righteousness, be like, facts for me. I'm gonna need you to like rap for me. Be jazz to me. Soul music walking up the baseline to your mama house, singing hostile gospels, I'm gonna need you to scat for me. Tote that gap for me. When the pride is torn from my chest, there's nothing left, barely a breath, they've taken my best, I need you to clap for me, snap for me, curl your top lip and cuss back for me, be real exact for me, not black for me, POC, cause this ain't that for me. Act like you know how to act for me. Wear a mask for me, but don't wear no mask for me. I need you to be as black as you can be, as blickety black, blackety blackety black, black as I can see and I can see. And some nights I'm gonna need you to talk to God for me. Some nights I'm gonna need you to be God to me. Show me the, the treasure they put in earthen vessels. Kindness nestled in a blink, care what I think. Ask me if I want something to eat. I'm like, I ain't got no money. I ain't asked you all that. I asked if you was hungry. Come by, check on me. Talk to me, cause you know I'm lonely. I need you to be real like, like real black for me, just like that for me. I need us to be brothers, to be husbands, to be strangers that 
from across the street like we cousins. I need all, all, all your black girl magic. I need all your dark boy joy. When you see me in the wrong place at the wrong time, interrupt my scene, ask me what I'm here for. Say, youngster, what you know about the blues and tell me every place you come from. Every song sang, you sung, hug me, call me, son, I'll quote the Bible. You can teach me the Quran, respond to I love you. As-salamu alaykum. Hug me, call me, son. Tell me to come back tomorrow if I got the time. Tell me I'm all yours. I need you to be all mine. I want you to be real black for me. That's that P show. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I get it from my mom. <laughs> Oh, it's my mother's birthday. Yeah. It's a holiday. That's all right. <laughs> Thank yes. y'all, so Y'all better take me to church then. Thank you, brother. Thank you for that. Peace. Whew. All right. Next, we have Cameron Talk. Cameron, you in the building. Cameron, you in the building? I think not. All right, moving on. We have my sister friend. I've known uh, JJ Oxtail since high school, and she is also a dancer, a unique dancer at that. JJ Oxtail, can you please show yourself, Queen? Am I am I, am I not visible? Can you guys hear me? We see, you, see you. me? We see oh, you. Okay, cool, cool. All right, I'm whenever you're ready. Working. Whenever you're ready. Right. Believing in yourself is stressful. When sanity is a target, my soul is a bulletproof vessel programmed to be destroyed, but the hard drive superior. Genocide on my exterior, high frequency interior. I never inferior, always so divine. Tangled up mirror neurons, a jungle in the mind. Sativa, beta, ease Inhale deeper before I meet the reaper. Dreams taking flight like shrooms on a cold night. We're ripping, empty clipping, submitting to heart's desires. Carnelian chromosomes giving my blood that fire. I embodied an inferno, putting my demons in the urn though. They burned flow. From an inner city kid, wisdom cornucopia, hooked on lyrical opium. Can you up my dosage? Thank you. Yes, with the enunciation and the alliteration. I love alliteration. Oh, thank you, Jasmine. Thank you, JJ Oxtail. Oh, my goodness. All right. So, to wrap up our open mic portion, we have Plumpiana. Are you in the building? Uh, Plumpiana? No. All right. All right. So we're going to move in into the featured performers. All right. Thank you guys to the open mic portion. Can y'all get some claps in the comment section, some praises? Thank you, everybody. That was amazing. You guys are amazing. And hopefully some of you guys are thinking about writing a book. This is the perfect time to do it. All right. So for our featured performer, starting off, I would like to introduce Bobby Stone. Bobby Stone is a serial entrepreneur from Brooklyn, New York. As Trevor would say, no one has one bad word to say about Bobby, and that is absolutely true. He's an MC, dope writer, dope lyricist, and I know he's about to bless us tonight. So without further ado, Bobby, you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready, sis. All right, take it on over. All right, I, I got I got something special for you for your listeners today. This is a game show they didn't know. So, three doors. You decide which is more fun. Allow me to introduce you to door one. You a hustler. No more being poor, son. And every time you slap your fingers, all the girls come supplying bricks, buying trips for the flyest chicks. Their life is lit, but door one has the highest risk. That new jag got every other crew mad. Somehow they feel entitled to all the things that you have too bad. Here's where it gets miserable. When you get locked, no one coming to visit you. The same chicks out here you was giving your digits to, they rocking with the same lames that was trying to get rid of you. 
And when the judge says F your life, that means when you come home, you have an F for life. What good is making a living if they're going to take you to prison? But it's your choice, and you got to make a decision. A pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. When you arrive, it just don't have the same glow. See, everybody got to pick a different lane, so choose wise. Life is like a game show. If it, uh, before you choose what you're going to do, allow me to introduce door number two. You got a good job. Life is kind of comfortable. You got the whole world standing right in front of you. Passed all your classes, got you a bachelor's, got you a master's, cop you the fastest, whip you legit, but peep the politics, kid. Door two comes with a moderate risk, because as soon as you get comfy in that new home, son, that's when them thirsty bill collectors from that school loan come, screaming, you old dumb. Another thing about door two, you could put in overtime and still be poor, too. That's why the whole town's so mad. It's the reason why door one don't sound so bad. What good is making a living if you ain't making a living? But it's your choice, and you got to make a decision. A pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. When you arrive, it just don't have the same glow. Everybody got to pick a different lane, so choose wise. Life is like a game show. Let's peep the story behind door three. It has the lowest risk out of all three. So you ain't got to hustle or work at all, G. And everything you desire, you get it all free, on fleek. Every day's a vacay, bro. You think you better than the other dude that's slain, yeah, yo. You quick to say no to UPS and they pay, bro. But don't have a peso to purchase one egg, bro. Hey, yo. Bridges ain't something you could burn. Everyone that helps you out, they want something in return. You think it's all fun to you begging for money from door two so you could cop weed from door one. See, you ain't got work or a job, brother. So you plot all day on how to rob, brothers. Focus on creating a vision, legit entrepreneurship. That's the greatest decision, you see. A pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. When you arrive, it just don't have the same glow. Everybody got to pick a different lane, so choose wise. Life is like a game show. If it, body stone. Thank y'all. 7-Eleven, it. it's my Give birthday. It. Yes, 7-Eleven, happy birthday, Bobby. One of my favorite bars. I feel like I chose entrepreneurship. Thank you, thank you, sis. And that video's on YouTube. I love everyone. That'd be a great birthday gift if everyone subscribed to my my mm. birthday, my Bobby Stone YouTube channel. And I'm gonna stay put. I'm gonna stay put in here the rest of your work, sis. Yes, yes, yes. I won't keep y'all long. Don't worry. All right. Thank you, Bobby. You on mute. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Nanasa. All right, y'all. <laughs> it's time to introduce the amazing Niger Rider, Yemisi. Nanasa, did you get my email? All right, perfect. So Yemisi wants you guys to see her poem as she reads it. So Nanasa's going to share it on the screen. Um, but yes, Yemisi is the author of Stared by Life, and she has a, a way with words that simply take your breath away. So... When you're when you're ready, let me see. Unmute, unmute yourself. Okay. Can everyone hear me? Hi, guys. Yes. Wow. Uh, okay. So this piece is called um, "Still We Must Choose to Rise." We will encounter many defeats, and we'll be shaken to the ground like crumbling sandcastles that knows only the desert but rises to the sky and dances with the clouds at the beckoning of the wind. We will know many defeats and feel pain like we breathe air but just like hair, pain is a breather to move us forward. When we lose hair, we stop breathing and drop to the ground a carcass for the vultures of the sky. When we don't know pain, we dwell in a mirage, a living carcass for the vultures on land. Still, through these defeats, we must learn by paying attention to the river that never stops flowing, even when surrounded by rocks, or the waves of the ocean that never stops rising, even when it crashes at the shore or the blowing winds of the desert, unsettling the sands, even when it's dust is enough to kill the traveler. So the dying lives in the midst of autumn, even when it has just known summer. To the 
empty barks, the trees in the winter awaiting spring. To the barren ground, pregnant with the seeds of the farmer's toil, more so when the outcome of the harvest remains unknown. We will encounter many defeats as we journey through our lives. The outcome of each may remain unknown, the future to which we cannot know, but must we give up? Must we stay mute? Must we bury ourselves in the silence of the defeat? Must we dine with failure and make love to fear? Must we sleep on the altar of sorrow? Must we sleep long enough to forget who we are? No. We must rise like a warlord at dawn. We must run towards the war. We must scream till every nerve boils in courage. We must run towards that which we fear till courage becomes our sword and vulnerability our shield. Till fear sees the army in us and runs in fear from the sword in our hands. We must choose this as our destiny so we may live the life worth living a life full and rich with stories, a life full and rich with colors, a life beautiful and rich with courage, a life beyond dreams, a life beyond memories. We will encounter many defeats. Still, we must choose to rise relentlessly like the yellow sun. Still, we must choose to flow like the glistening river. Still, we must choose to bloom like the cherry blossoms in April. Still, we must choose to be the ones who keep the church burning. Still, we must choose to rise. Still, we must choose to rise. Thank you. Thank you, Yemi. Thank you. Oh my God. I feel like, Yemi, you have a way of making me address my fears that I'm just like, I can't, I can't get, you just don't give me any excuses. You don't give me any excuses. Like I'm just thinking about all the things that I fear. That, that's that's what, what came to me when I was hearing the poem. So thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you everyone. All right. Oh, all right. Oops, oops, oops. What do we have next? All right. So, Oops. All right, so before I move on to the final uh, featured performer, actually, no, I'm, I'm going to read um, back to 125th Street for you guys before we get to our final performer. Actually, I was about to skip Cito. All right, so I'm going to read back to 125th Street for you guys. Um, this is the first poem in my book, Back to Quentin. I remember how uncomfortable I was the day we went to take family photos. It was summertime in Harlem. We walked up from Lenox Avenue to Fifth Avenue. Traffic would keep us in the cab longer than necessary. I didn't want to get out of that car. I'd be given away by my lace, white and green African gown. Daddy and mommy walked with a familiar stride a confident walk I had not mimicked yet. My hands were sweating and my mind was creating words as if I knew what their American eyes were saying about my African family. Every step matched every gaze. Some eyes in question, others in praise. I asked God that day not to let me run into anyone from school. This portrait, my favorite now. Looking as I do now, walking as I do now, seeing how I see now. This portrait takes me back to 125th where my walk talks and says, you belong. All right. Woo. All right. So before I move on to my right next, <laughs> thank you, my next people, feature performer, not my last. Uh -oh. Maddie's not feeling it. Um, please type it's lit in the comment section if you're enjoying yourself. 
All right, and then our next performer is Cito Blanco. Cito, you in the building? Sure. Let's get it here. What's Go. up, Cito? All right, let me do a quick introduction, you guys. Cito is one of my very first clients representing the Bronx, New York. And um, yeah, this guy is powerful and I don't even have to say much, um, but yeah, let's, let's, let's go, let's get it. Let's get in your bag, Cito. Thank you, for, thank you for the introduction. First off, you know what I'm saying? I feel like as we uni unified melanated people when it's somebody's birthday, you know what I'm saying? You gotta get a little happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. A little shoulders, just a little shoulders, just a little bit. All right, all right. Um, I get, all right, we'll get into this. Matter of fact, amazing editor. Like, she and me and her worked on my book to a point that, like, we used to, like, butt heads. Like, I gotta keep this bar. And she's yes. like, what does it mean to the people? Listen, he sent me the manuscript after I fixed it, and he fucked it up. And he was like, I need you to fix this in two days. I was like, excuse me? I'm sorry, you know what I'm saying? Oh, we I got mean, it done. <laughs> but it did, it, it did. You know what I'm saying? I like the stuff that's provocative, keeps the people going. I, I got you right now. I got All you. Right. All right, so um, I laugh at the days that I was scared to be me, acting like the people that I seen on TV. The days that I spent not being true to my soul is the days that felt so cold and low and lost in this place that I thought was my home. Every door that I opened, I felt more alone. Looking in the mirror, wondering if I was the clone. Cause this can't be me. This can't be you. Whatever happened to the passion that we had on the first day of school? I remember when cool used to rule. Now all we do is get drinks and eat food. Like, who are you? Yo, sometimes I think about who I used to be and the memories are scary. Calling women hoes, making fun of people's clothes, stashing oaths for my bros. Trust me, there's so much more the Lord knows. Like, I'm crying because my soul is exposed. I hate tears, can't never tell the same story. Like, I cry because of fear. I cry because I wish my grandmother was here. I cry because there's days where I wish I wouldn't be here. But I'm a ghost. I'm only focused on my goals, but having so much power could be such a lonely road. Especially when friends say that they here. <laughs> Just because you're present doesn't mean you gifted me your kid. Yo, how did my story of pain turn into how the girl from your job bought the same color hair? How Tommy from Power was at your job buying beers, but I listened to your point in the story your day because I can't. I guess it wasn't lying. Life really isn't fit. I guess I'm not strong enough to tell you how weak I am. Like, I don't have suicidal thoughts. I just wonder what certain people would say at my grave. To be honest, one of my deepest secrets is that sometimes I feel like a lame when I'm screaming Jesus' name, but I'm a sinner and that's old news. Try walking in my old shoes. Them kicks don't fit. And these new kids hurt a little bit. And I hate the fact that I need people to feel love. Like, I really miss the drugs. Like, nah, dead ass though. Like, I really miss the drugs. Like, when I was high, even fake love felt like a hug. This is a hard word to deal with when you're sober. But playtime is over. I decide to live my reality. Because that's my destiny. I don't run for my pain no more. Tried to smoke, but the high ain't the same no more. Drugs numb me from my pain, but I realized the lessons I had to gain was in my pain. So now I accept life for what it is, not just some of it, the whole thing. You know, the only way for me to be the people's champ, me to take the rock off your chest and let you know in this world, sometimes you lose even though you tried your best. But being better today than you were yesterday is worth more than a check. We all learn how to crawl before we know how to take a step. So take it one day at a time, it's never too late. And don't stay at the destination because the ETA might scare you away. To stay true to the essence of your soul. And remember that 30 isn't old and just write down your goals. You can keep a promise that one don't got to know, just let it go. Don't be frozen in this life. I heard that song when I was watching my niece and it made me think twice like, damn. Maybe kids got the recipe to life. Be bold, be spontaneous, be adventurous, be true. Life change when I look at the definition of enough. And I seen a picture of you. 
My name's Cito Blanco. Shout out, you know what I'm saying? Happy birthday. Good vibes. Yes. Thank you, yo. See you. Yeah, for, sure. for sure. God, you always showing love, always showing out. Of A course. very, very important part of this community. Your hard work doesn't go unnoticed. Thank you. Blessings and gratitude to you and your family at all Thank times. You. We praying for you. We rooting for you. Thank you. Sean Queen, Sean Queen, Sean. That's all I'm going to say. Just shine. Yo. Get your shine on. Get your shine on. Get your shine on. Hey. <laughs> oh, man. Yo. Cito. Powerhouse. I mean, damn. It's like you just ripped my soul out my chest just now. Thank you. Thank, uh, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Head back and add to the room. All right, let me let me collect myself, y'all. My God. <laughs> Whew, all right. Wow. Thank you for that, CEO. All no, right. Sure. So um Cito is the author of 98 Cents, you guys. I'll definitely be give, getting into more detail of all the authors in a future performance later. All right. So the next poem that I would like to read for you guys is titled Women Do Right. All right. <clears throat> Women do riot. After Ana Castillo's Women Don't Riot. Women do riot. In fabricas in Ethiopia, Mexico, and Indonesia. At sweatshops in New York and New Jersey. Women do revolt against small wages and unequal pay. In kitchens, in jeans, in two-piece suits by the hundreds and thousands. Women do riot with passion and anger, high and strung out, with tight dresses and five inch heels. Women riot in college meetings, join their unfisted, cramped up fingers in hard times, make and carry signs with the weight of a 15 page paper due the next day. Women do riot in prisons, on welfare against their attacker, against their attackers. Every last one sooner or later riots. We riot on TV, on the internet, from this day to the next and the next, me, my daughter, and your daughter too. Women riot in Kenya, marching arm in arm alongside other women in Australia and across continents, loud in their tongues unified in abandonment, broken hearts, motherhood, womanhood, woman riot. Oh, all right. Before I introduce my final performer, if you guys are enjoying this Poetry Slam, type it's lit in the comment section. All right. All right, now this person that's closing out is a true, true dear friend, amazing writer, author, performer. So without further ado, uh uh, Peter Henry, are you there? <laughs> Peter Henry. Hey, Peter. All right, when you ready, my love. Yes, Teresa. I'm also kind of just I'll let you guys safety with you. Me say that we sent only rain. Enough for me. I want to be you. Pizza, you going in and out. You going in and out. Yeah. I would stay, start all over if you can find a steady spot. Right. Just give me. Okay. 
Is my video steady now? Yes, much Am I better. Now? Much okay, better. Perfect. I just had to come to my living room for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. So this poem is called Sapiosexing with You. Me, sapiosexual. You say that you know how to be sensual, but I guess you only reign in physical stimulation. But no, that's not enough for me when it comes to orgasmic elevation. I want to be sapiosexing with you. I want you to come dig my mind out the way you want to dig my insides out. Give me soulgasms and mindgasms. Sapiosex me till I pass out from orgasms, from loving the way that we do. See, they only loved your after sex glow. I love your afterglow after I've written and read you poetry, after I've made you soulgasm so many times that the ink from my pen drips in anticipation of the next word you'll be for me. I wanna make love to you spiritually, to gravitate to you mentally, to satisfy you so deep until the death of me. I mean, truthfully speaking, I got tired of people fucking bodies, but never fucking minds. I got tired of becoming one carnally, but never becoming one soulfully. I mean, biblically. Feel me? It's hard to explain, but when I used to ask you to go deeper, it didn't mean I wanted you to increase your speed or thrust yourself harder into me. I just meant that I wanted you to do both that and reaching my soul's clitoris simultaneously. We vibe so deep that not only your physical extension, but also your soul pulsates inside me. Sapiosexing sexing with you is how I want to be. Where we can lay our love down and make homes inside souls. Where you are more inside me than the very marrow of my bones. So I say all this to say that I want to write poems on your body. To create a physical representation of all the things that you make me feel spiritually, sexually, emotionally. All the words your love manifests into becoming words that make this my poetry. Sapio sexing with you. Making love with the art that is you. Soul food. And baby, when you make me come, my mind drips. My heart commits. My soul admits that you make it twice whole, that you are so lover, but also so lover. Sapiosexing with you. Well, my favorite parts of you are beyond the flesh, where my orgasm happened long before touching you, before even breaking a sweat. So tonight, I wanna be sapiosexing with you, and I don't even need to touch you. I can feel you getting hard just by hearing me speak to you. I devour you lyrically before I devour you physically. You feel me? Thanks for listening, guys. Oh Thank you so yes. much. For well, you Happy it? birthday, yeah. Bestie! Thank you. Anything for you, girl. Oh my God, yes. That was the way to end. Got my, <laughs> spirit, got my spirits high. And the comment section going crazy. <laughs> Thank you, Pizza. Oh my goodness. Beautiful way to end. I think that was the perfect way to end. All right. So I'm excited. Amakosu.com is excited to present you guys with an exclusive B-Day Poetry Bundle that contains seven uniquely selected ebooks from the Amakosu Poetry, Poetry Slam featured performers and sponsors as well as the Customer Service 2 album by Bobby Stone. All right, so the lineup for the seven eBooks are 98 Cents by Cito Blanco, Stirred by Life by Yemisi, Nolumbo by Ivelisse Namaste, Sapio Sexing with You by Miss Pita Henry, Back to Kukwento Me by Akosu Anantachi, Dear Nice Girl by Akosu Anantachi, and For the Hustler by Trevor Cassaberry and of course with the Customer Service 2 album. So for the next 28 hours, Amakosu.com will have this exclusive offer for just $27. This is the only place to find these eBooks bundled together for only $27. And the offer is available until Sunday at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Central Time. Nanasa, can you please post the link in the chat box 
the, the link is amakoso.com slash 27 if you're interested in expanding your poetry. Y'all saw these heavy hitters, okay? The, the books uh, speak volumes just as much as these performers did tonight, all right? Um, and for my, or for those who attended, um, I have a virtual gift bag for you guys that contains the Money Moves Workshop Collection presented by Casterberry Consulting and it um, showcases eight ways to make money online. I'll be sending that to you guys by the end of the weekend via email, all right? And then if you want the 11 steps to self-publish, you can get that at amacoso.com slash 11. And then also you can take over the final part, please. All right, y'all. <clears throat> I hope y'all ready to... Um... Show us those vocal cords. Cause we gonna sing a little happy birthday, okay? Let me see if my audio is working. Oh, you know, we gotta do the black version, so. Okay, yes. All right, y'all ready? Y'all ready? Wait, let me take everybody off mute. Oh, yes, and let me post everybody's social media in the chat. Let me do that right now, all the feature performers. All right, all right. Yes, Peter, make sure you... version all right everybody unmute their mics let's do this together let's close it out then now so you can you can lead us all right three two one happy birthday to you Happy birthday, dear. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. 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 Happy you guys are amazing, amazing, amazing. And I'll definitely be doing this again next year for sure. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Oh, yes, I guess that's we'll, it. We'll be doing it live next year. Well, hopefully yes. we'll cross our fingers, right? Hopefully we'll be live <laughs> next year. Because in person, it, it, nothing compares to in person. But the virtual okay. definitely is a vibe. Oh, thank Advocate Boy, Advocate all the way from Ghana. What's up, Advocate Boy Bang? Yes, yes, yes. Ghana now. All right, so I won't keep you guys longer. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you guys for joining me. Thank you thank for the you for having us. Of thank course. Together, I hope everyone stays blessed Love and you. stays Love safe. You. Good night. Uh, love you. Love you. Love you. Bye. Thank you, Nia. Thank you, Jasmine. Nia, I love you. Bye, Mamina. I love you. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Bye.